So anyway, I, I, I put a message together. You know, we just came off Halloween, October. You know, it, we always do Brutal Night usually in October. And we're like, why don't we do it in November? Because it's clo actually closer to Halloween, you know. And we always like to keep it, you know, a little heavier, a little edgier. And, you know, the message that I have for you tonight is, it's called Skeletons in the Closet. You know, and uh, it's really about my secrets. Everybody say secret. Have you ever told somebody a secret and then they shared it with everybody? <laughs> Come on. Anybody? It's like, hey, man, I, I, I want to share something with you, but just don't tell anybody, you know. And, you know, I love that scene in Greece where, you know, uh, Rizzo tells Marty she's pregnant, and then by the time she gets back to the car, he's like, hey, Rizzo, I heard you knocked up, you know? He runs all the way through all the cars in the drive through and everything. It's kind of like that. Anybody, I, am I the only one that, like, had the eight track for Greece? <laughs> yeah, I had that eight track. So what's up with that? Why is it like that? You know, the bottom line is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it doesn't any, anywhere resemble what it was. But, you know, the bottom line is, don't we all have secrets? We all have secrets. You know, I've told somebody something and had them blab it to everybody. I know some of you have, too. I trusted them, and they betrayed me. And they let me down. That happens in life, doesn't it? You know, secrets, a lot of times, are secrets because they're th things that we're ashamed of. They're things that we're worried that other people will find out. And, uh, you know, we don't want people to know some things about us. I don't. You know what I mean? Anybody ever been there? You know that I still have secrets? Right, hon? She's like, I don't know. They're secrets. You're not telling me. I have skeletons in my closet. You know why they hold us captive? Because we want to have a reputation. We want everyone to think good things about us. We want to be admired. We want to be looked at with good rapport. And I get that. And there's, you don't really want to reveal everything that you have going on in your life to everybody in the world. I do kind of on Sundays, but you shouldn't. Because I do it for the sake of you being able to learn from my mistakes. But, you know, we keep things secret from others. But here's the bottom line. You're not keeping anything secret from God. You can have all the skeletons in your closet you want. But God knows every detail of your life, every second, every sin, every evil thought, every uh, jealousy, every moment of anger, God was there and he witnessed it. You see, there's no such thing when it comes to you and your relationship with God, is hidden sin. We hide sin from others. We hide our sin, and we put our skeletons in the closet around other people. But if we can truly and sincerely come at God with a uh, attitude and a relationship that I'm not going to hold anything back from you, he will meet us there. Look at this. It says, closet's full. I think they're sending demons to the basement. We have our demons, don't we? We all battle things. I don't know why we feel like we have to have this persona of perfection in our lives because it doesn't exist. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We're all in one way or another, falling short. See, the bottom line is you can't run from God. So why try? You know, if you owe somebody a debt, if I, if I gave you 
Let's say Olivia, because I love picking on you in church. Because you're so cute. You smile. If I gave you a thousand bucks and you spent it and you don't now you don't have it and you see me and I'm coming down the mall and you know I asked you yesterday for that thousand dollars back, what are you gonna do? You're gonna run, right? She's going to ditch into a store. She's going to try to avoid me. She's going to try to hide, you know. And that's what happens with our relationship with God. God has set you free from all of your sins, but you, and he knows what every one of them are, but yet we're trying to keep our sin hidden from God so that when we come to God, we're actually running away from God because we think he's going to look at us and see our sin when he's already seen it. He already knows. So we've got to get to a place in our life where we will come to God sincerely and go, you already know, man. So I'm going to openly talk to you about the things that are going on in my life that need to change. We've got things going on in our lives that need to change. Except for my wife. She's perfect. But think about this. You can't run away from God because he knows everything. And skeletons are things that are dead. They don't have any life in them. They have nothing to offer you as far as life is concerned and being able to to give you a better life. They're the scary things that we bury away. We put them away. We hide them. We don't want to bring them to the light. Maybe for some of you it's sexual issues. Maybe it's abuse that happened to you when you were a child. Maybe it's your criminal past. You know, I have a criminal past. I do. They're all going to go look it up, Michelle. I'm Kevin Radlin. You know, I got a speeding ticket in a school zone to a 90 in 1984. 90 in a school zone. You, if you could have seen that cop's face, it's a little, uh, what do they call them? A little, the truckers call them evil Knievels, a little, uh, motorcycle cops, you know, he's sitting at the end of Rosentine. I went to Coco High and he had that radar out and I was coming out of high school and I had it to the floor, man. What? Woo! I ought to take you to jail right now, but I'm going to write you this ticket instead. 1984. How much do you think he wrote me a ticket for? How much? 300? How much? Twelve dollars? I wish. You're getting better. Eight hundred and seventy dollar ticket. But it's all when we when we look at these skeletons, when we look at these things in our past, when we look at these things going on in our lives that we're trying to hide, right? We're trying to hide them. We're trying to keep them hidden from everybody, like having a to get in, uh, doing 90 in a school zone, right? That's stupid. If my kids were, you know, if I was an adult like I am now and my kids were in school and you came flying through a school zone where my kids were at 90 miles an hour, we would be meeting. <laughs> you know, but when you're, what, 17, you're not thinking about that stuff. But m- most skeletons in our closet are things... Listen to me. Things that God would not approve of. And other people probably wouldn't approve of. You see, your family and friends might not know about your secret sins. Because we all have them. The secret sins. But here's the thing. God knows. You're not hiding anything from him. You cannot hide from God. So why try? I'm kind of here to set you free. I'm going to let you out of the cage so that you can actually live your life free by going to God and telling God what you already know that he knows. He already knows. The Bible says if we are 
If we'll confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and give us his righteousness and set us free. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. See, I'm telling you his truth that you by grace have been saved through faith, not of yourselves, but it's a gift from God. And if you will call on the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. If you will go to God and say, I have this sin in my life, it's called repentance. And you re he already knows, so what, you're not going to shock him. Have you ever told somebody something and you knew they already knew? Wasn't as bad, was it? So look what the Bible says about all this stuff. You know, I just want to throw some scripture at you for a minute. Proverbs 28, 13. He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Psalm 69, 5. Oh God, you know my foolishness. And my sins are not hidden from you. So here's the thing. Some of you are carrying guilt from your past life, from the life you lived before you knew God. You're still carrying guilt. You're still carrying shame. You're still carrying condemnation in your heart of the things that happened to you or the things that were done to you or the things that you did that were bad. And I'm here today to tell you that if you will just take them to God and give them to God, he'll wash you clean and he will give you a whole new direction and a whole new life. You can, in the presence of God, let your skeletons out of the closet. <laughs> So how long are you going to carry the guilt from your past when God's just waiting for you to give it to him? He's saying, just give it to me. What are you going to let rob you of the blessings of God in your life today? Yesterday's in the past. Pumbaa and the Lion King, you know. So it doesn't matter. It's in the past. Or that was Rafiki, wasn't it? doesn't matter. It's in the past. And Puma said, yeah, you got to put your past in your behind. So we've got to understand, you know, that we don't have to take this stuff to the grave. You don't have to try to keep hiding all of this stuff from God. He already knows you can go to him and go, God, I'm having a problem with Fill in the blank. Depression. Sexual sin. Condemnation. Any of the, these things God wants to release you from today. We want to pray for you to be free today. Psalms 90, verse 8. You have set our iniquities before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. God knows everything about you. He's watching you. Right? You cannot hide from God. Jeremiah 16, 17. It's all over scripture. For my eyes are on all their ways. They are not hidden from my face, nor is their iniquity hidden from my eyes. God knows. He sees it. Psalms 139, 3 and 7. You comprehend my path and bring my lying down and are acquainted with all of my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? You can't. So why keep trying to run from God? Own it. Confess it. Go home, get on your knees in your bedroom by yourself and go, God, I'm clearing the closet today. I'm letting it all go. Set me free. Because he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. 
God's not holding your sins against you. You are. And because you feel like you owe God this great debt, because of your sin, you're running from him instead of running to him. When all he's doing is holding his arms open saying, come child, come to me. Come unto me all you who are weary, who are heavy laden, who are burdened, who are filled with sin and condemnation and guilt and depression. And I will give you rest for your soul. <laughs> Because the bottom line is this, you know, you think you can hide it, but your sins will find you out. Anybody ever gotten what I, I call it getting popped, getting busted? <laughs> Randy, you're the only one that raised your hand. You're the only one, bro. So. <laughs> I'm kidding, man. I'm kidding. A couple other people raised their hands. Your sins will find you out. Luke 12, 1 and 2 says it. In the meantime... Uh, when our innumerable multitude of people had gathered together so that they trampled one another, he began to say to his disciples, first of all, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed nor hidden that will not be known. There's nothing. You may be able to hide it all the way to judgment day, but you're not going to hide it in the face of God. You can hide it from people. But everything's coming before the judgment seat. I say throw it on the table now and just lose it. Be done with it. Because there's a danger of unconfessed sin in your life. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 says, Behold, the, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear you. The more you try to hide your sin from God, the more God tur is turned away from you. If you'll be transparent and open your heart to God, he'll meet you right there. You know why God listens and he hears your sins and he just loves you even more because you come to him? It's because of the blood of Jesus. He says, how much more will the blood of Jesus purge your conscience from dead works so that you can serve the living God? Jesus was God in the flesh. God knew you couldn't fix your sin. He knew you could never get free from it, that you'd be trapped in it till the last day that you gave your last breath. God knew that you would be trapped in your sins, and he, knowing you couldn't get yourself free, came into this world as a man himself and, and became a human and, and laid his life down and sacrificed himself on the cross so that you could be set free from your sins. The Bible says that he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we would become the righteousness of God in him. So when you try to hide your sin from God, you're saying, I do not want to bring this sin to the cross. I do not want to let you, God, pay the price for that sin. I want to keep it for myself. I want to keep it hidden. And then guess what? You end up paying the price for that sin yourself. And you don't have what it takes to pay that price. Jesus was the spotless lamb of God. He was the only one worthy to take away the sins of the world. We were hopeless and God rescued us. So therefore he's saying to us, take those skeletons out of the closet and bring them to me. Confess your sin and I'll be faithful and just to forgive you of all of your sins. And then you can have a clear conscience. The enemy can come and say, look what you did. You're like, no, 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 that's under the blood. I took that one to God. He took that one for me. 
You know, when the enemy is, he's the accuser of the brethren, right? He's going to come and he's going to get in your face and he's going to go, you're a dirt bag. Look what you did. And you're going to look him in the eye and you're going to go, no, Jesus took that one. That's the answer. Jesus took that one for me. <laughs> we can't deny our sins. We got to see it as God sees it. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. You know, the biggest battle that we face is our thought life. Joyce Meyer says the battlefield is in the mind. You know, the Bible says take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. In other words, bring every thought to Jesus. Every thought that you have, bring it to him. Say, God, is this thought from you? Is this from me or is it from the devil? And whatever that thought is, I want your will to be accomplished from it. See, the problem with us is we've let our minds do whatever we want. Whatever they want, it wants. It's like, oh yeah, you can think whatever you want to think. You can do whatever you want to do. You can watch whatever you want to watch, mind. You know, I mean, this past month, I mean, how many, you know, let's be honest. How many of you guys actually watched a horror movie this month? <laughs> I'm so proud of you guys. You've been listening in church. I did not. Now, I had a couple of opportunities when I was strolling, when I was scrolling through. I had a couple of opportunities. And I said, no, 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 no. I, I have to take that thought captive. As much as, I, you know, those special effects look cool. See, we've built strongholds into our lives through bad thinking. You know, I, I tell my kids to take the garbage cans out to the road and they're afraid to go to the street because they walk halfway down the driveway with the garbage can. They start hearing, cha, 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 cha. and you hear them. They're like, and they're back in the house. The garbage can's at the road. But man, I've never seen anybody move that fast in all my life. What are you afraid of? <laughs> what? It's like that, though, isn't it? Come on, man. You know what my, my worst fear is? That I would break down with a, a road with woods on both sides for two miles. Because I've watched so many movies where animals came out of the woods and ate people. I'm not even worried about the psycho killer. I'm worried about the werewolf or the, the, the psycho. Yeah, I know, but he, what if there's a pack of them? <laughs> so the battle is in our minds. All of us in some area of another have the skeletons in our closet. We have things we need to get over. We have things we need to confess before God. And the bottom line is this. We are called to a life of integrity and purity as believers in Jesus Christ. You know, Ephesians 5, 8 through 14 says we need to walk in the light. For you were once darkness. But now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, finding out what is acceptable to God. And then have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Bring them to God, for it's shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Bring it to God. Bring it to the light. Once the light shines on it, you're free. 
God, I'm bringing this to you. This happened to me. I didn't do this. It happened to me, but it deals in my head and my thinking. It's brought things into my life that are bad. I've got strongholds that have been built into my thinking over this thing, or I'm acting out behaviors that I know are wrong, and I need to find the root of those behaviors so that I can take them and, and, and bring them to you and be free from them. We've got to bring those things to God and to his word and then allow the word to release us by faith. We just got to believe that when the Bible says that by his stripes you were healed, that when you're sick, no, the word says I was, I'm healed. You know, a lot of times we think healing is, you know, getting immediately fixed in this life. But, you know, death is one of the greatest healings for the believer. When you're a believer and you die, you get healed. There's peace in that for us as believers. There's peace in that. We think, oh, they died. Well, were they a believer? Yeah, they're loving life. They're, wish they're not wishing they were back with you at all. Next level. I like that. I don't use that. That's a sermon right there. Next level. Hebrews 4.12. We're, we're almost done. Hey, man, it's only 7.40. It's really 8.40, but it's only 7.40. You lost an hour. Or you got an hour. I'm taking it back right now. No, I'm kidding. Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow. It's a discerner of the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Give account now. Don't wait till you die and get before God and go, yeah, you know, I probably should have brought that one to the table, huh? <laughs> yeah. So when's the last time you cleaned out your closet? Not your real closet, your skeletal closet. Clean that thing out. There's probably some cobwebs, some bones, some skulls. God made skulls. Let's bring them to him. Expose your secrets to the light. Repent. Turn away from the things that are separating you from God. All God's asking you to do is admit it. That's all. Just own it. And he'll help you. All right, a couple more scriptures and we're done. First John 1 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, we can't we can't beat sin on our own. You can't. You're never gonna get free from sin on your own. You've got to bring it to God. And he'll give you the victory. Just own it. Second Chronicles 6.14, and he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God in heaven or on earth like you who keeps your covenant and mercy with your servants who walk before you with all their hearts. Look at that last part. What's God really want? Your heart. He just wants you to acknowledge him. Give your life to him. Live for him. You won't, do, you won't be perfect, and he's not looking for perfect people. There aren't any. But he's looking for people that will humbly submit themselves to him and say, God, I need your help. He's an ever-present help in time of need. Would you bow your heads with me? We're going to say a prayer, and then we've got a baptism that we're going to do. Father.
Father, we're just so grateful. So, so grateful. That you're merciful, you're forgiving, you're loving, you're kind, you're patient. You've seen it all through all of time and all of humanity. There is nothing that you haven't seen people do. We can't shock you. We can't surprise you. But we can submit our lives to you and we can find peace through surrendering our life to you. If you're here today and you say, you know what, I don't know that I've ever really fully surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. I, I believe that Jesus is God, but I've never really fully surrendered my life to him. I'd like to give you an opportunity to do that. And all I'm going to ask you to do is with everybody's heads bowed and eyes closed, just lift your hand. If that's you, just lift your hand. Say, I want to submit my life fully and completely to God today. I see that one. I see that one. That's it. You can put them right back down. God's, God sees it, and that's all he needs. That's all he needs is to just see that simple act of faith. Anyone else? And then I'm going to pray. Say, that's me. I need to just, I need to just submit my life to God. Father, I just thank you. I thank you for each person that's here today. I pray they would go home and take a look in their closets. See what's going on in there. See if there's anything in their life sinful that they need to bring to the light. And I pray you would give them the strength to, to release all of that to you, God, because you've already seen it. I pray they would just come to you humbly and say, I need your forgiveness, God. And I release them right now. I pray strength over them for them to go and do what they need to do before heaven. And I thank you for your grace and for your mercy. You promised it to us in your word. That if we will come to you, you will release us. So we're coming to you in Jesus' name. Everybody said Amen. Amen. So we're going um, to, you still want to get baptized, right? Let's have you head in the back. And uh, this is going to be, this is going to be cool, man. It's actually our first baptism here in the sanctuary here at God's Rock. So, you know, you're, you're opening the tank for us. You're launching it. We've got towels back there. Joseph's back there. Oh yeah. Okay. Somebody go grab Joseph a towel, honey. All right. So, you know, Come on in. Is it warm? It's, it's, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It's actually not too bad. It's not terrible. All right. So you guys know that if any of you ever want to be baptized, you know that's something that we, we love to do here at Lighthouse Church. We've baptized over 200 people in the last three months. And God's moving. People are being healed in this tank. People are being delivered in this tank and people are, are finding a, an intimate relationship with Jesus in this tank. So brother, you know, what do you get baptized? It's your first time ever being baptized. We're so excited for you, man. Tell every, tell everybody your name. Diavante. Everyone. This is Diavante. Come on. Can we give him a big round of applause? Yeah. Come on, man. Now the only qualification for baptism is that you're a believer in Jesus Christ. So do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes, I do. All right. Well, according to your profession of faith. Yep. Come on over. It's our privilege. It's our honor. Yep. And hold your nose. Yeah. It's our honor and privilege to baptize you, brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in baptism. Raised in the newness of life. Come on, man. Yeah. Stay right here. 
Father, I just thank you for our brother right here, and uh, we just we just speak life over him, Lord. This is a new day, a new chapter. Everything changed right now in this tank. We send him forth from this day forward with your power, with your anointing, with your presence, guiding him and directing him in every day of his life. We thank you for him. I just see God doing incredible things for you, man. I just see God changing your whole world and redesigning everything about you and, and setting you on a new path in a new direction for him and I just speak the name of Jesus over you and life over you and I declare that you will do incredible things for God man from this day forward in Jesus name everybody said amen, amen. God bless you man come on thanks for coming to God's rock man we'll see you guys next month there's still a little bit of food and some snacks drinks don't forget bring your ten dollar gift next month for the party and a dish to share we're gonna have a big dinner it's gonna be great love you guys thanks for coming to god's rock